Welcome to the Living Word Telecast, the powerful outreach ministry of Bishop Paul Cannon Jr. and Evangelist Jacqueline Cannon and the Nash Full Gospel Holy Temple Church. You're invited to attend any of our dynamic services where the Word of God is preached under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, where exuberant praise is rendered along with inspirational singing and music. Join us for a time of worship and praise. And now we take you into today's service already in progress. Why should I feel discouraged? Tell me why should the shadows, why should they fall? And tell me why should my heart be lonely? Long for my heaven at home. When Jesus
for me all night long. Seize me if I'm doing wrong. He's up. Up and down the highway. Danger seen and unseen. He's up. Not my mama's son. Amen. To all of our live stream and telecast viewers and radio listeners, we want to invite you to one of the most exciting churches in the Arklatex area, and that is Nash Full Gospel Holy Temple. Amen. And we are a church for all people. Our service schedule is right there on the screen for our telecast viewers to choose one of all of these services and come and worship the Lord with us. Amen. And I believe that you will get a blessing in your very first service. To all of our partners that have sent donations to help and support us in getting this gospel message out across the world, we want to say thank you. Amen. And maybe you haven't had an opportunity to take time and send that donation. Whether it's small or, or large, it doesn't matter. Amen. Praise the Lord. We will receive it, and we will thank God for it and use it for the spreading of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And we are looking forward to seeing you real, real soon. To encourage those that are saved and living for God, and also to admonish those that are not saved to come on over here where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. And when I say come on over here, I'm not saying this building. I'm talking about come on over into salvation. Amen. Praise the Lord. Everything you need is in Jesus Christ. We're going to go quickly to the word of God. Two passive scriptures we're going to read today from the book of 2 Timothy. The second chapter and the 13th verse. And we're going to read Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, 1 through 6. And that's 2 Timothy 2 and 13. And it reads as thus. If ye believe not, yet he abided faithful. For he cannot deny himself. Isaiah 53 and 1, who hath believed our report? Yes, yes. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Yes, yes. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant yes. and as a root out of dry ground. Yes. He has no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken bitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Thank God for the reading and the hearing of his word. I want to talk, amen, from this simple subject today in the form of a question. Who has believed our report? 
who has believed our report? When it comes to the things of God, there's so much unbelief in the land. There's so much skepticism. And many times people have unbelief concerning God and the way of God because of how some people present it. Amen. You see on the television programs and the movies and the news and the all of these things, you see, amen, God portrayed as uh, uh, somebody uh, on the same level as man. And the, uh, somebody powerless. And can't, but that's not the God that we serve. And because of it, there's a lot of unbelief in the land. Now, in Isaiah, the prophet was amazed at the unbelief of the Jews after all the prophet's words they had received concerning the coming of the Messiah. And it's the same way today. Many profess to believe the report, but few embrace it and submit to the power of the gospel. It's not enough to say, I believe, and then don't do anything about it. It's something about what you believe. What you believe matters because it dictates how you live. Uh, what you believe matters because, amen, it affects your attitude and your demeanor. It also affects your character and your actions. And if people really believe in God like they say, they wouldn't be living like they live in. Who has believed our report? You know, uh, we can read some of everything in the newspaper, and I've seen some uh, amazing things in the newspaper. And it doesn't matter what the newspaper say or what the newscasts say, we believe it. We take it for face value. That's news. That's a report. Uh, that's the account of or the information about what was supposed to have happened, and we just take it at face value because we say it's the news. And how many times have we got the paper the next day and saw in small print down at the bottom of the page somewhere, amen, a retraction or a correction. Amen. They say John Doe broke in John Phillip's house, but it was actually John Phillip that broke in John Doe's house. But we just took it at face value. If they said it, we simply believed it. But when it comes to the word of God, when it comes to this report, the word of God that comes from God, people have a hard time believing it. But I love what Paul said over there to Timothy. If ye believe not, yet God abided faithful, for he cannot deny himself. In other words, you don't have to believe if you don't want to. But it's not going to hinder God from being God. Amen. God is real. God is not a figment of our imagination. It's not just something church people talk about on Sunday morning. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, God is real. Amen. God is real. And God got power. Power to do anything but fail. He has creative power. Do you not know, amen, that God stepped out on nothing and said, let there be? And things start happening. Yeah. Amen. He just spoke the word and the sun, the moon, everything was in his place. I love the words of the songwriter that said, who made the mountains? And who made the trees? Who wrote the song for the robin to sing? And the songwriter said, somebody bigger. Somebody bigger than you and I. We can make a lot of things, but we have to have something to start with. But God started with nothing and made something. Amen. He, God is so powerful, amen, that he made man from the dust of the earth. Formed him, amen, from the dust of the earth. Made him in his likeness and his image. And then breathed into his nostrils. And the scripture said man became a living soul. God is powerful. Amen. When you look at yourself in the mirror, you're looking at a miracle. You're looking at a miracle fearfully and wonderfully made, amen, by God. Who has believed our report? Not only does God have creative power, God has destructive power. God has destructive power. In the days of Noah, when the people got beside themselves and all the imagination and thoughts and intents of their heart was evil continually, God got fed up. And God said, I'm going to destroy this world. And, and he did. Told Noah to build that ark. 
Amen. Praise the Lord for the safety of his family. They went in the ark and God shut the door. And God allowed it to rain. 40 days and 40 nights. Until it covered the entire earth. Everybody on the face of the earth that were not in the ark were destroyed. God has destructive power. The psalmist put it like this in Psalm 7 and 11. God judges the righteous. But God is angry with the wicked every day. Do you believe that report? Amen. If you believe that report, amen, it, it, tent, it makes me believe that you will change your ways. God angry every day. And you don't want God angry with you. Amen. But God has creative power. He has destructive power. And he has restorative uh, power. Amen. God has the power to bring back to a former state. Amen. Praise the Lord. That has been destroyed and tore up. God got power to fix it back up again. And you know, I thought about that. I got excited. I thought about our lives. Amen. All of us were born in sin and shaping in iniquity. We weren't fit for heaven. Lord, have mercy. We did things that we don't want nobody else to know we did. Amen. Things, amen, that are steep in the nostrils of God. Amen. Praise God. And we were on our way to hell. But God in his infinite wisdom. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Amen. God, amen, restored us. Amen. Back to fellowship with him through his son, Jesus Christ. And now we've been changed by the power of God. Who has believed our report? Who, has, who believes the report that sin is a detriment to mankind? The Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. Proverbs, the wise man said, the way of a transgressor is hard. The Lord spoke to the prophet Ezekiel in the 18th chapter, 4 and 30th verse, and he said, behold, all souls are mine. But he said, the soul that sin it, it shall die. So he said, repent and turn from all your transgressions. So iniquity shall not be your ruin. How many believe the report that sin is a detriment to mankind? Look at what sin is doing in the lives of people today. We call it fun. We call it good time. But look how sin is destroying men's lives. Alcoholism. Drugs. Destroying men's lives. Now they're legalizing these drugs. Amen. Now we're having more accidents on the highway. Amen. Praise the Lord. People killing people. Amen. Because they're under the influence. All because of sin. People killing their own children. Burying them in the backyard, in the woods. Amen. Sin is ugly. Amen. Sin is ugly. It's a, it's a detriment to mankind. It'll ruin your life. And it'll send you straight to hell. Do you believe that report? If you believe that report, you want to come out of that. Come out of sin. Amen. And give God your life. Who believes the report that God provided a way out of sin through the death and resurrection of his precious son, Jesus Christ? We all quote the scripture. We've learned it from a child up, St. John 3 and 16. For God so loved the world. Do you believe that report today? God loves you. I may be talking to someone this morning that you are at the edge of yourself. You feel like you've gone as far as you can go. And you feel like nobody loves you or nobody cares. But I'm bringing you good news this morning, and the report don't lie. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of men that he should repent. If God said it, he means what he said. For God so loved the world. That includes you. Men, women, boys, and girls. It doesn't matter what walk of life you are from. God loves you. He cares about you. He's concerned about you. I know you're going through now and it's hard and it's tough. And you've uh, got these bondages and these afflictions in your life. But God is able. God loves you. And I don't care if you're gay and you're funny as a blade. God loves you. I don't care what you are, God loves you. You got a soul, and God is concerned about your soul. And this is why he sent his son Jesus into the world, for God so loved the world that he gave. Love is an action word. He gave. What did he give? The best that he
that he had. He gave his only begotten son. Amen. And his son gave his life. A man died so that you could have joy. A man died so that you could have peace of mind. A man died so that you could live a happy life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. And thank God his son gave his life. Amen. Man don't have to be bound any longer. That is a way out, and that way is through Jesus Christ. Do you believe the report? Do you believe the report? Listen, life is not in stuff. Life is not in fame. We see that the other, the other month. Amen, praise the Lord. The actor, amen, that took his own life, living on top of the world, can go anywhere he want to go. Amen, made all, all of us laugh. Amen, but he was unhappy because he didn't have Christ in his life. But what I'm trying to tell you, Christ has the power to fill that void. Yes. There is a void in every man and in every woman. And I don't care what you try to fill it with, it will never satisfy. Women are trying to fill it with men. And they've got so desperate now that women are going to women. But you can't fill that void with a sexual relationship. You can't fill that void just with stuff. Amen. Buying stuff and they buying stuff and buying stuff and hoarding. Amen. Stuff all over the house, everywhere. Amen. Trying to fill an inward void that can only be satisfied. Amen. By a right relationship with your God. But Jesus made a way. And that way is through his son, Jesus Christ. Do you believe the report? Who believes the report that salvation affords man everything he needs for his earthly existence? Amen. You know, people try to look down on the saved life, but honey, you got to look up if you want to look at me. Tell your neighbor, look on up. Come on, put that chin on up. Tell him, put that chin on up. You got to look up when you're looking at me. Amen. Saved. Amen. When you are saved, amen, it affords you everything you need for your earthly existence. And then it guarantees you, amen, a ticket to heaven. Amen. It's a blessing being saved. There are benefits in serving God. Who forgiveth all, not some, but all of your iniquities. He don't leave you like the halfway house. He don't leave you like these amen, these old, old talk sessions. Amen. Uh, I am John. My name is John, and I'm an alcoholic. And you go into the session every month, you're still an alcoholic. God don't leave you like that. God deliver you from the alcohol. And you can say, my name is John. I used to be. But I've been delivered by the power of God. Because he delivered me, forgave me of all my iniquity. Ain't nothing like being forgiven. Knowing that the slate been wiped clean. All the ugly you did, God throw it in the sea of forgiveness. Never to remember it anymore. And he don't go and put it, he put a no fishing sign. He don't go and fish him up like people do. Oh, I feel Jesus. You know, sometimes you do stuff to folk and they say they forgive you. But a few weeks later, they bring it back up. They ain't forgave you. Oh, but the Lord is not like that. When he clean you up and forgive you, he forget about it. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. And you know what? It's a beautiful thing that when you get saved, it's like you never did it before. Lord, you look back over your life and you start giving your testimony and start thinking about, Lord, did I do that? Oh, my God. Amen. God clean you up so it's like you never done it before. This is the, do you believe the report? I don't care if you don't believe it. This report is real. I'm not talking about what I heard. I'm not talking about what somebody told me. I'm talking about what I experienced in my life at the tender age of 18. Went to the altar and said, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Save me, Lord. Clean me up. And I want you to know the Lord cleaned me up. Took cussing out of my mouth. Lord, you didn't want to talk to me and make me mad. I had a list of words that I would spill out to you. But when the Lord saved me, he took all them ugly words out of my mouth. Now when I stomp my toes, that don't come out anymore. Jesus comes out now. Oh, bless your name, God. This is what salvation affords you. Do you believe the report? Listen, you got to believe somebody. When somebody tell you the party was hot last night, you'll believe that junk. Well, I'm telling you, Jesus is all you need. He's all you need. Forgive us all our iniquities and heal it all our diseases. That's a blessing in being saved. I don't care what 
help nobody. Say, God is a healer. I say, God is a healer. I've been sick and he's touched and healed my body. I know he's a healer. It didn't say we'll never get sick. But by those stripes that he took on his back, they are for the healing of the nation. Hallelujah. The psalmist went on, got excited, and said he redeemed my life from destruction. You know what? All of us were on a, a runaway train. We were on our way to hell fast. But the Lord redeemed us, oh, snatched us, redeemed us from destruction. Hey! Crown you with loving kindness and tender mercies. And he'll renew your youth like the eagle. Give you the ability to soar. Oh, I feel like soaring. He'll give you the ability to fly above what's going on in your life. Woo! You look at yourself in the mirror and say, how in the world am I making it? Ah, God will renew your strength. Make you mount up with wings like an eagle. Get above that trial. Get above that hardship. Mm -hmm. Woo! Paul said in Philippians 4 and 19, my God shall supply. Not he might supply, but he shall supply all your need according to his riches in Christ Jesus. Somebody asked the question, how rich is God? Well, I want you to know he owns it all. All the silver and the gold belongs to God. Yes, Lord. All the oranges in Florida belong to God. All the potatoes in Idaho belong to God. All the peanuts in Georgia belong to God. Y'all better work with me now. Look at your name and say, it all belongs to God. And since I am a child of God, when I need it, all I got to do is call on him. This is a benefit of salvation. Don't look down on saved people. Saved people got it going on. Saved people know how to dress. And don't tell me we don't look distinctive. Thank you for tuning into today's service, and it's our prayer that you've been blessed. You're welcome to worship with us at Nashville Gospel. Our service schedule is Wednesday and Saturday at 8 p.m. Sunday school begins at 9.45 a.m., Sunday morning worship at 11 a.m., Bible class is 6.30 p.m., and Sunday night evangelistic service starts at 7.30 p.m. Our children's church is Sunday night at 7.30 p.m. as well. May God keep you and bless you until next week. And remember, we love you and God loves you too.